Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. And it is a wonderful day outside today. With several announcements, uh, if you're interested in joining me with the book study on rural ministry, or interested in reading any of the books that I have uh, in the fellowship hall and having a discussion at a time that doesn't conflict with uh, our harvest coming up, uh, let me know. There's a sign-up form there if you want to sign out any of the books. You can, you can do that. Uh, also, I want to point out that, that for the uh, people that are in the junior, senior high at Superior High School, on the 25th, uh, at 7.30 in the morning, we're going to have prayer around the flagpole for the junior, senior high at 7.30 in the morning. It's student-led prayer, and several of the pastors will be there uh, from Superior. And if your school system would like to do something similar, uh, just let me know, and we can maybe arrange that. Uh, also, uh, October 5th on a Saturday is, uh, is the day to explore camp. Uh, camp Carol Joy Halling is uh, only the day for uh, elementary age kids to come for the day. Uh, parents, if you want to join them, that cost is free for, for the adults, but it's $25 per child for that. And uh, if we have people going up, I will join the group as well. Uh, so if you're interested, let me know. But you do have to sign up on the website in order to register. Uh, today, we have uh, birthdays for uh, our, at least this week, we have birthdays for Gladys. Uh, Opelman and Lynette uh, McCutcheon and Darren Steve uh, Saunders and anniversaries for Zach and Nicole Bowling and Blake and Kaylee Heitman. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on, on our members here that are celebrating their birthdays. We thank you for giving us uh, these years on earth and we ask the Lord that you give us many more as you see fit and that we can use it to the betterment of of your kingdom and we also thank you lord for the uh, beautiful weddings and, and marriages that we have in our congregation as well this we ask in your name amen, amen. so today Three, well, actually, three weeks ago, we heard Peter's confession of faith as told in John's Gospel. On a side note, we heard this Gospel lesson on the 25th of February. I'm not going to do the same sermon. I almost thought I would do that and see if you remember. <laughs> but this week, we hear Mark's version, and when Peter asks, you are the Messiah. In John, the assembly box is Jesus' invitation to eat his flesh, given for the life of the world. In Mark 2, the scandal has to do with Jesus' words about his own upcoming death. And here Peter himself humbles himself, stumbles over Jesus' words. But Jesus is anointed, the meaning of Messiah. In Mark, only the word of the way to the cross is that we are anointed in baptism with the sign of the cross. So let us stand as we are able for the brief order of confession and forgiveness on page 10 in the blue hymn. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom those secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and he cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 776, and the blue hymn will be that one my vision. Let us rise as you're able to page 28 for the three. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I'll serve with you.
we pray. O oh God, through your suffering and protection, you bring forth our salvation. And by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the glory of evil, take up our cross and follow our sister, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Full of deadly poison. 
With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives, or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. And he speaks to God.
Go you chicken fat go. Anybody remember that song? Some of you know it. Some of you, some of you had it in school because they shipped the record to every school in America. And it's a silly song. If you want to look it up on YouTube, it'll say <laughs> But I didn't play it today because we didn't have enough time. Six minutes long. And you did exercise, you did push-ups, you did sit-ups, you did jumping jacks. That stretches all that was done during the day. And they would play it. For me, I was in fifth grade when this happened, and they would play this over the PA, and we'd all be on the floor and we'd all be doing this stuff. So, you think that's pretty funny? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just the thinking of me being on the floor because it's hard for me to get up anymore. <laughs> Because I don't exercise enough. So today is a little bit about exercising. You'll hear about it in the sermon. It's, it's about exercising your faith. When he says, take up your cross and follow me, that's a call for you to exercise your faith. Okay. So let's have a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that you give us those spiritual muscles that we need and that we can exercise to spread the good news of your of the Lord Jesus Christ to the world. We know that we're young, but we are powerful and we don't know it. But you, we find strength through you. This we ask in your name. Amen. <laughs> Yesterday was Milo Day, and I started at 5 in the morning and ended up at 9 last night, so just a little tired. <laughs> Who do you say that I am? Jesus asked Peter and those, and of course, more importantly, Jesus asked us, who do you say that I am? This modern world has our priorities of time, our priorities of commitment, and our priorities of loyalty for work, for school, for sports, for family, and for our relationships. Where does our spiritual health come in? I'm sure it matters to God. And Jesus may be taking a back seat in the bus rather than riding shotgun with you. Or maybe even taking the wheel. I pray that it is not the case with any of you. You have to answer to God and yourself for that. We do know what others have to say about Christians, the Christian church in this day and age, and its relationship to Jesus. Some of it good, some not so good. Some of that criticism is well earned. There are within the Christian church false teachers, cults of personality, and outright heresy today. Be careful that you're not taken in. I'm especially aware that I must be vigilant in what I say and teach to you. According to James, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we, teach, we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. As for me, I pray that God's true message speaks to you through me, just a humble servant. It is important that you also are careful in your Christian witness. Speak with humility. When God's true good news is shared, you will also speak with authority. According to a 2023 Gallup poll, 68% of Americans identify with the Christian religion. That identity to me is somewhat dubious 
because I doubt that 68% of us, those around us, are active in spiritual life. That leaves a percentage who totally reject it, others who might think it's a good thing to be around, a part of, when they get around to it before they die. Yes, we should spend some time thinking about how we would respond to Jesus' pointed question. This certainly would be a worthwhile self-reflection. I think now better than later, because later may be too late. When you think deeply about it, there is more that Jesus is asking us in this question. That unasked but especially important question is also, who will you say that you are? That's a pretty earth-shaking question and pretty impactful on your life. It is also important for those who surround you. It's one thing to say that Jesus is the Messiah. That's only halfway there. Can you then answer what you are? What confirms that you are not just giving lip service and that you are a follower of Christ? Jesus was not ready for the disciples to reveal his identity to everyone in today's gospel, but we're not under any of that constraint today. Who you say that Jesus is is the first step of who you have decided to be. You cannot answer Jesus' question without revealing who you are. What is your identity? What is your commitment? What is your discipleship? Last week, as we examined the healing of the daughter, of the mother who pleaded to Jesus for that, her daughter's healing, we also met the man who is deaf and dumb. Both Gentiles who are in desperate circumstances but trust in Jesus. In their joy, they declare Jesus' power to all that they need. Can you say the same? Jesus pleads with us to, do, to rise above our comfortable American Christianity. You know, we have nothing in common with the first century Christians. Christians who were fed to the lions or crucified for the rejection of emperor worship and a belief in the divinity of Jesus. Not here in America, but elsewhere in the world, people are killed for their expressed Christianity yet today. That does not stop them from believing, and yet their faith is so strong in their persecution that we can learn a lesson or two from them. Case in point, at Bethany Seminary, I knew students from Nigeria who have had their churches burned down, their daughters abducted, friends and family killed because of their Christianity. Yet the Christians in Nigeria persevere, and they have thriving large congregations that are worshiping for hours at a time. They also share their churches with multiple congregations. So yes, we are too comfortable in our safe Christianity. There's no real fear of losing our life or being under attack for our Christian belief here in America. However, that does come with a price. Complacency. Where can we find the persistence, the tenacious faith, the clinging to Christ that we find in the first century church, that we find in scripture, that, or that we find in places like Nigeria? Jesus addressed both the disciples and the crowd and with us today with the statement, if any of you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross 
and follow me. His statement to us is difficult. We must first deny ourselves, contrary to the very fiber of our human tendencies. How often do we deny ourselves? Deny ourselves in any meaningful way. I struggle with that, don't you? Maybe if we focus on the needs of others, that's the beginning. Matthew 25, 31 through 40 may give us a, an answer or an idea for this. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and, and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Jesus said to us to take up our cross and follow him. Not just read about the cross or hear about Christ on the cross. Jesus meant just that. Follow Jesus. Do what Jesus has taught us to do. To love God and to love others as we love ourselves. And that's not always easy. And it is our cross to bear. Jesus is a hard act to follow. And we have to acknowledge we are sinners more often than we are saints. That is what we come, that's what we come to worship for. To ask God for forgiveness and to have our failings be cleansed by God's mercy and grace. Heed what Jesus warned Peter of. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. This warning is as valid today as it was the day Jesus told the disciples. We must find our cross today in more creative ways. By doing ministry that's out of our comfort zone. It's like doing daily spiritual physical fitness exercises. We know if we do not use our muscles, you become stiff, and those muscles will grow weak from the non-use. Stretching our faith is not comfortable, nor is it meant to be. However, we can do it together, if we do it together as a church, while we grow closer to God, we will build our spiritual muscle tone together. I do not know what your cross is. That is for you to discuss. I invite you to open your heart and your mind for guidance from the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Our hymn of the day is number 554. Let us rise if you are able to the possible God has made us his, his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the conscious pilot, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for the church throughout the world. Form us into communities of forgiveness and grace. Help us to notice where you are calling us into new relationships and give us courage to embrace the uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the earth and all its inhabitants. Protect lands at risk of wildfire and heal dying forests. Where fire brings destruction, rise up new growth. Guide us in tending various ecosystems. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who govern nations, tribes, and cities. Open them to the cries of people in need. Direct them in shaping policies that prioritize the health and well-being of all who struggle with hunger and housing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who are ill, all who are lonely or anxious, and all who grieve, especially Brad, Gladys, Doyle, Ernestine, Shelley, Gail, Justin, Donna O, Ashton, Jason, Kurt, and Brennan. Draw them close to you and soothe them with the promise of your enduring love. Hear us, O God. We pray for teachers, professors, Library, school administrators, staff, and all who support the education of young people. Sustain them as they shape learning communities rooted in equity and authenticity. We pray for children of all ages in their learning. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for this congregation and for all who are gathered. Be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Our tri saints, shutting members, Donna M, Gladys, Janice, Audrey, Ruby, Laverne, and Inez, and Kathy. We hold them in prayer because they are not forgotten. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember our beloved dead, who with the great cloud of witnesses bear witness to your saving grace. Accompany us in our pilgrimage of faith that we too place our hope and trust in you. Hear us, O oh God. The mercy is great. We entrust these and all of our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. You may share the peace with each other.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.